design a particular module which generates this as an output. So if you think that you can very easily solve this particular problem as a software problem, that you know you uh, you could think about uh, it on a similar line to how you would write code for Fibonacci series in Python or C, and you would be done by it. But doing something like this in hardware is where you know things they start becoming interesting. So uh, uh, if you think about uh, HDL programming, the way I said that you never go ahead and you know right away write start writing RTL, you never do that. The first thing which you have to do is figure out what the hardware will look like. So in this case, you know, uh, since I know that how this particular problem is solved, uh, if you take an example of how this particular output is produced, it is produced by adding previous two outputs, which is like five and seven. If you add them together, you'll get 12. Similarly, if you took, look at nine, you will get if you add five and four together. Similarly, if you look at four, you get it if you add this two and this two together. So this is the way, you know, this problem can be solved. But if you want to do this in uh, hardware, what it means is that you need to remember what you saw three cycles earlier, because you need that information in order to generate the information for the next cycle. And this means that you actually need to have memories which will store that data up till three cycles before which means that you need here in this case, since it is just what few bits, you can have three different flops, which will hold the data for, let's say the previous cycle, which let's call it as T1, then T2 and T3, which means that you need three sets of flops, which will hold the data. And then you will utilize the T2 and T3 cycle to form the current output, which means that you need an adder which will take the output from those two flops, add it together and produce the output. So uh, I'm unable to, one second, yeah. Just a second. So, so basically, Rahul, what you're trying mm -hmm. to say is rather than thinking about RTL lines, you have to think at a little bit higher abstraction level. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes, exactly. So the first thing which you should always do is, you know, you know, start. I always start with pen and paper. So here, what I mentioned was, so we had the sequence like one, zero, zero, followed by three ones, then two, then three then what oh, sorry two four whatever right and what we wanted is to remember the previous data which is like this is t1 this is t2 and this is t3 so you wanted to remember data up till t3 then add t3 and t2 together to form the next output so once you know that you have to do this then Wherever you want to, you know, utilize information for the previous cycle, that means that you have to store that information. And the way you store that information is either in memories or in flops. So in this case, we will have flops. So let's say this is D, this is Q, and this will take in some information and give the output. So whenever you are using a flop, which means the uh, uh, here we are using a D flip flop. It means that the information available on the Q output will be after a cycle because it takes a cycle to write into the flop and then you will read it out in the next cycle. So this means that you already have the T1 signal here. And similarly, you will, you know, because you need T2 and T3 also, you will have another set of flop here and then another set of flop here. So this will be T2, this will be T3. Now, once you have this designed, then what you what next you have to do is you have to add these two together and then produce the final output. And this output is the one which actually goes back and feeds into it. So once you have you know something like this ready, you can now write RTL for this very easily because your RTL, if you think about it, is divided into sequential logic and combinational logic. It is always this. So you would have some sort of a sequential logic and combination logic. So if you think about this example, all of these flops are the sequential logic. 
and this particular adder is the combinational logic so if you have all of this ready then you know it becomes very easy you need to write rdl for you know three flops and just a counter no sorry just an adder so the adder what are the two inputs which it takes it takes input from the t2 flop and from the t3 flop and then produces the output what happens with the output it goes back as an input to t1 flop so what you are basically doing now here is you have the rtl for three flops you have the rtl for adder and then you have the rtl for just connecting the different signals together